Oh boy. Yes, I saw it moved. It moved. It moved. Yes. Okay, moved. let me let me go. Look. You might be facing right now the historical moment in your lifetime. As close as I was possible to present, I give you details about Harold Coleman, 1956, free energy device that uses 100% non radioactive components. It does not use lithium batteries that contaminate our world or any kind of lead acid batteries where the blood suckers of this world are allowed to make them because somebody has enough money to force the law to be able to do that. I'm providing in here checked proof of concept. A claim or based on my personal opinion is more safe than microwave. And it cost ten dollars per seventy years it looks like. The device might be even tomorrow. The solution for gasoline, gas and electric. So you just take out the gasoline engine and put the electrical one and the small car is being powered. So, Would the big one be able to handle it? Possibly yes. Tube number two. Can you say my needle or something like that? Small? Small needle? Like My wife does, no, does that. Something so I can put a couple of them inside. Oh, I see. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna find something. Hold on. Too small, it's not even taking the layer. Yes, yes, too much. That. It's okay. Yeah. Well, let's try this one. That's what is it now? Zinc? Zinc. So we put copper, we put what? It was the second one? The chemicals? Yeah. And then we put some zinc. Oh, the, yeah, but the chemicals was what? Uh, all together, like phosphate, cobalt, and. Oh, the, the black one is already. Yes. The mixed. Mixed. <coughs> Try to cover at least the layer. So it won't make any. Last time we made some. Last time we couldn't achieve the. That's too much. Carbon, probably the current. That's copper? Be. It's copper now. This is what exactly did. It's copper, more copper, right? Yes, more copper. Right? Okay. Hold on. That's the thing now, right? Yes. 516, 73, 516, let's see. It's too much watts. Okay, let's see how much is 500. This is 50. Our meaning of it is stays on the paper and we're gonna lose it. No, it won't work that way. What we can do, we can we can directly scale it to zero. It'll be easier. 
Okay. Ha! <laughs> but this is more than 20 grams, unfortunately. So this only gives you about 20 grams. No, but then, then we're not gonna. Ha okay, try that. But then, this is how many grams? Eight grams. Eight grams. And then we should pop four of it. Should be a tiny spoon like this. This is something that your hands should not be. Can you do that as do you think? How about like like uh, this would never uh, but if you put too much of it? This is hundred. There's something wrong with the calculation. That okay. much of it? That much of powder is no, we cannot get 15 of it. Too much? Too much. Did I make the calculation wrong? Yeah. It's too much. Oh, and they are asking like... Oh, it's because they maybe this part is kind of weak. The way that we can cut this part to the minimum. To the minimum is not gonna hold. It's not gonna hold. It's not gonna hold. The, the, the whole purpose is that you put it in and you twist just a little and it holds. Just a little twist. See? Yes. Now it's hold. Mm, but we got the part. This should be. This should be. Uh, right, right now you put too much, right? Maybe. But what is the. ID of this one, can we measure that again? It should be 4.8. Hold on. Documentary. Okay, directed to, to what I'm doing. So I'm screwing from one side. I'm screwing, screwing from one side. it from one side. Now what I do is because I have a flexible in here. And, uh, by the way your audio sounds a little bit, to me it sounds like it's overdriven so I'm not sure if you can crank the mic gain down. <laughs> okay how about if I speak a little bit further from the microphone that might be due to the very unusual antenna that I'm using. Uh, is it clear more right now? No, I was doing a scientific project and I connected. I'm using 45 millimeters long glass pipe at the inside diameter of 5 millimeters with a powder in it. And I'm able through the repeater uh, on the frequency of 448700 transmitting frequency connect to the Orlando, Florida. Something unbelievable. Back to you. So in other words, I was using that tube only with nothing connected to it, connected with two short leads, about five centimeters each one, to the coaxial cable, and the end of the coaxial cable was connected to the transmitter working on 70 centimeters. And then I find out something strange happened. Oh boy. Yes, I saw it moved. It moved. It moved, yes. Okay, moved. let me let me go. Look. So not now probably while you are No no no, right now it's on the battery. Hold on. It's on zero. It, it it was it moved. It moved, yes, I saw it moved. 
it was all the way off and it Okay, ho hold it, hold it. Gosh, I don't remember the frequency. I changed the frequency. Was a radioactive antenna, obviously, <laughs> what you made it. <laughs> what was the frequency, obviously? I'm, I'm doing it right now. So the same frequency? Maybe while you are talking, <coughs> while you are talking, it's a different thing. Yeah. No, no, no. Maybe I need to go to the toilet, I got too much okay, anxiety. Okay, 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 okay. Cool. try to put as small as possible yeah so in other words we had some changes about 100 40 150 megahertz but when i put the 140 it didn't have the reaction at all and the giga meter doesn't show any radiation at all historical moment has come I'm revealing all of the secrets of that technology to the humanity and anybody who is interested with it this is the future
growing up, Uh-huh. Okay, I'm holding one hand the coil and I'm slightly moving the coil to the camp and changing the end a little bit or the coil that is on it is growing up. pity that I cannot record what I'm doing right now. Anyo? Anya? Anyo? Anya? I was calling my wife to help me out. She was sleeping. I was touching with the hand this this wire that is going to the capacitor. Everything is random, nothing is measured. Right now it's zero. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it down. I'm transmitting on the frequency four four eight eight seven eight. And I'm getting right now a power of Forty something, forty something, forty something watts, and this is my gigameter. Oh boy, how can I do that? And nothing is moving right now. I probably need to do a little bit with the compound. Now 
I have a coil here. The coil is connected in series with the capacitor. Nothing is calculated. Everything is totally random. It's like a child is playing with it. And I'm trying to see the movement when I'm pressing the button. Now, I see the cable from the microphone. Let me put a little bit light on. Okay, like that. I see the cable microphone touching this, and when I'm moving all of that chaotic structure, like that, between these two wires and the one goes here, okay, the green wire. Okay, I see that by moving the microphone, I'm changing the power. The, so it's completely random. Everything is right now random. I'm trying to position the microphone so the wires are tangled and create some kind of the most of the power being sent. And now I'm trying make this the the, the bigger meter to yeah how can I make it Okay, I'm not changing the frequency right now, so I need a third hand, I don't know how to do it, because now what I have to do is, maybe I do it this way, it's going up, now at this time it didn't go all the way up, and I'm having only about 25 watts of power. Now. And now I'm gonna release the button and see what's happened. My hands are here. This is my other hand. Yeah. Then return pull to zero. Slowly. No, this bone, this is without me. This is without the hands. So this aftershock. This aftershock is with my hands in here. Okay. See, we, we're going to have any other aftershock. Now it's close to zero. I'm going to repeat it again. With the same hand, I'm going to press it. I put that on and there is a power on. There is a power on, it's going on over there, it's going on over there, it's going on over there, it's going more, it's going more, it's going more. Okay, now I'm gonna release the button. Now, it's slowly going down and now I'm looking for the aftershock. Now, my hands are here. See if we're gonna have an after aftershock. Put my hands in here, press the button. Press the button. Now I'm getting 25 watts. It's going up. It's going up. It's going up. It's going up. 
okay it's total actuation i don't know why now i'm releasing this in my hand and see if we have an aftershock Okay, it's going up, it's going up, okay, wow, now I'm releasing the button, look, these are my hands, two hands, let's look for aftershock, this is my one hand, this is my second hand. Is not zero. Let's see if we're gonna have an aftershock. Turn one more time the same. Pressing the button. Put the power on. Didn't do much. Okay. Didn't do much. Okay, it's going on, it's going on. Still did it return to zero. Almost, no, almost returned to zero. And with the other hand, I'm going to do it. Yes. of transmission four four eight eight seven zero 
Now what is happening with the meter is that when I'm pushing now I have a sort of clear picture. Check. Hey! This is by itself. I didn't touch it. Didn't touch. Let me check if this is hot. No, this compound is completely not hot. And I'm not, I'm not having zero here. Here. God, how can I make this? Hold on. And the final moment is validation of the technology of Coleman from patent of 1956. There is no longer protecting and anybody could use the technology. I, Wesley, state the technology works as independent. New future for humanity. It's going to be a little bit fuzzy because the camera is, is cheap camera. So what we have in here is this part here, maybe start from this, is the feeding. Now you see the little part of the inside diameter. So from here to the other end, let me move that. The other hand in here. That's so this part is the is brass and this part is brass. Then I'm gonna move that in here. This is copper from here to here is copper. Then you see a this layer now this layer if I remember correctly I had to find a guy who was who was with me um, and he was doing that this was the first tube, tube assembled uh, I'm not sure if here we have a very thin layer of cobalt and graphite but then in here we have a zinc and then we have definitely 100% in here the small layer very small layer I'm gonna tr try here uh, it's uh, out of focus this camera is cheap I don't have the money to buy another one the, the better one okay this one is a cobalt now all of the substances in here are not radioactive you cannot find any radioactivity in here so with with that um validating the original patent from 1956 coleman as truth and working one it what it appears is that electromagnetic wave in my particular situation of about 25 26 watts not less than this that are able to trigger uh, that compound Now what I also find out I don't know why the cut ground granulated copper that I have in here uh, Wasn't really conductive We're gonna find out from the manufacturer why it wasn't conductive. So when I put the ohm meter from here to over there the resistance of the compound was extremely extremely high so none of my meters could do could man manage that. I have a one care magnetic analyzer could manage that, and uh, plenty of others. Now the statue of limitation that I have had is that this device uh, 4194 a impedance gain phase analyzer is only giving the, me the impedance to 40 megahertz. I don't have the probe for it to 100 megahertz, but still, it's b much below. The vector network analyzer advantage R. 374B works only to 140 50 megahertz. I'm a low frequency guy. I got a lot of help from the spectrum analyzer and Advantas R3267 being able to see the, uh, the frequency of the transmitter. Now, the, in, the, the input from that spectrum analyzer is connected here 
to the attenuator and then out of the attenuator have nothing so I don't have any any connection in here so the, the radio wave that was transmitted was able to from that coil or from the two pieces of wire connected to the coaxial cable I'm gonna go through the coaxial cable this is the coaxial cable output of 70 centimeters band it's going here, 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 here and then in here see I had this structure, very much chaotic structure because I didn't have any tuning network so I was using a wires as okay so this one disconnect itself oh the radio is still working okay it's when, when this thing falls it connect, disconnect itself hold on let me do it okay like that so what was that then cable I have a two leads uh, then one goes to the green wire and the green wire is connected to one side of the coil the coil is random I didn't even have any it just was random random the other one the black wire is going back over oh, uh, no, it wasn't like that. It was not like that. I had it. Oh, I see. The reason that the, the wire was disconnected was because I had this capacitor in series and was standing here. It fell down. I was working till 7 o'clock in the morning. Okay. So there was a, the serious resonance circuit, a coil, and the capacitor and connected to the transmitter. So all of the tangles of the wire gave me ability on the transmitter to see that when I push the button, I gotta push the button here. I didn't want it to touch anything right now. That right now I have only 10 watts or 12 watts. It's not enough. In order to, uh, to activate the compound, I need to have at least 25 watts. So by by moving that microphone and all of this stuff, I was just seeing on the uh, on the needle in here going even up to 15 watts because uh, this transceiver is capable at 77 centimeter bands uh, to 50 watts maximum. But at 25, 26 uh, uh, watts, the activation happened. Now. As you see in here, you don't have a 14 layers or whatever that is in the patent. You have just a first a pipe that, that we, that we uh, made. Oh, I see in here something. Okay, I forgot about this layer. Okay, we have a brass feeding. We have a zinc. We have a copper. Then we have a very, very thin layer. I believe it's a cobalt and graphite then we have a zinc then you have a cobalt and graphite and then we have a copper and then the brass fitting so from one side we have a copper touching the brass fitting and from the other side we have a zinc but because the structure you see you don't have a connection here I was trying also to deliver the, the, the voltage here, but the, the resistance of the compound is absolutely big one. And uh, the problem with, with the copper powder that I have in here is that for some reason we don't know why. So I was able to activate the compound, but I wasn't able to withdraw the electricity from the compound is that if you look at that stuff, I have only one hand. And I'm going to try to immerse these two probes. 
here with one hand with one hand like that and try to immerse them like that okay so we have the exposed ends and immerse them and the resistance is too big for the Ketley 179A uh, which I'm using the ohmmeter from it hold on like that to to be red, red and this is a copper it's a copper powdered so the next thing we're gonna manufacture and uh, we're gonna find out from the manufacturer is why the same is is happened with the zinc and I have a little zinc in here left over because all of the chemicals are gone and I know why okay okay and when I do it with the, did it with the zinc it is also non-conductive for some reason stretch zinc so again with that I'm validating the patent it's true it's working the activation through the electromagnetic wave the frequency the original in the patent was 300 megahertz This is the feeling that I have used to close the ends of the pipe. When you put you 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 put on meal on, on on late only the, that squarish part. Now you trim or skim only 70% of that squarish part of that part. You cannot go further because it's gonna fall down because this is the hole in here. So then you put that into the end of the pipe like that both sides, and you uh, go to the diameter now. I said that the inside diameter is five millimeters. Actually, this is a European tube, so it's metric. It's I believe 479, 477, something like that. No, yeah, 473, 473 uh, uh, of millimeter. Now, as a compactor, I use this drill bit, and I was punching it. In here, you have a label at Home Depot. For that feeling. So what about Capenati? Was he hiding similar concept? No, from 1956. Inside his tubes, whatever he was doing. Definitely, I've seen it on my own eyes. I've been in Georgia, I've been in Tbilisi, and the device works. We don't know how it works. Ariel Capenati had a chance to have a big money. But when it comes to that, he back off, creating a lot of problems to others. Maybe I'm wrong, but the typical technique technique of TK is he agrees to whatever conditions. He asks for three, four thousand dollars. Then you come over, and all you gotta be doing is just waiting. And the show is going to be a few hours before your flight. So you have to rush to the flight and you have no time to go further or review whatever you've seen. I was his guest. He never took any, any money from, from me. I was the lucky one. Why? Because I'm a crazy scientist. Or playing with the science. Or maybe I'm nobody. It doesn't matter. The matter is, we're fighting for the clean environment. We're fighting for a better future for our children. So what is better future for our children? Lithium-ion batteries? What is lithium? Is lithium little? Guys, you're buying all of that stuff, you're disposing all of that stuff, and somebody allows to do it because somebody makes buck on it. We have a gasoline and we have uh, fumes and contaminants and everything else because somebody makes a mark on it. The nuclear power is dangerous because of the danger of explosion. 
but at the same time if you take the microwave the microwave by itself is based on my opinion personal opinion and that's the legal term if concentrated much more dangerous than this device what was poison over there actually on my way so let's say this thing is contained and let's say this thing is able to give you a significant amount of power for the small car what's gonna happen that's what's gonna happen is the gasoline engine is gonna be taken out of the car small car the small electric motor is gonna put be, be put there and cost 100 dollars use one uh, let's say 500 dollars not the lithium ion batteries lead lead is what how much lead is in one battery and how much lead was in the device that you seen nothing zero so you don't discourage or encourage anybody don't try it don't touch it never do it nope 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 you just pay you're good in it don't you let everybody else to make a buck keep you in a shadow make you dependent the hysteria about radioactive material radioactivity is pumped by big man and those entities dense people based on my personal opinion want us to pay for lead acid batteries for the gas gasoline electric this is what controls your wallet this is what controls your life you have a choice the tiny tiny properly approved device with a proper scientific exposure in a certain cage living 70 years and costing you 10 dollars possibly Make the replacement for one time for 70 years. Right. Or live the way that you're living now. It is about you guys. Again, I stress that I have used zero of radioactive materials. All of the components were non radioactive. It is only the activation of the compound that makes it energy transmitters, clean energy transmitters. It's much more safer, based on my personal opinion, than any kind of batteries of today or lithium or iron or anything, whatever. Then gasoline, then all of the fumes, then all of these contaminants. This is the future. And it's working. Is in within your reach. I have a dream that you drive your cars and if you are your car while driving using energy of 25 watts or maybe less provided from taxpayer money by the government that's all after your device is discharged no trace of anything radioactivity nothing safer than microwave that you use in your kitchen my personal opinion have a good night sweet dreams